start with this little warm up right here. Solve using the test point method. The test point method. This is something you did in Algebra 2. Okay? In Algebra 2, you had to figure out what the answer for x was here. And it wasn't just one number, it was like a group of numbers. So it might be like x is greater than 5, or, you know, like there was a grouping of numbers because it's an inequality. There's not an equal sign right there, there's a greater than sign. And so the method that you use to do this, and it'll come back, it's called the test point method. But the way that it works is you first have to have 0 on the right side. So we move the 12x over to this side, giving us x cubed minus 4x squared minus 12x is greater than 0. And then from here, you factored what you had on the left side. And sometimes it was just, you know, to the second power, so it was a lot easier to factor. Here it's to the third power, so a little bit more difficult, but hopefully you see that all three terms there have an x in common. Right? Everybody see that? So if I factor the x out, I have x squared minus 4x minus 12. And then what we have in parentheses here, that factors. Anyone want to help me out on that? 6 and 2, good. So we have an x and an x, a 6 and a 2. Tell me a little bit more about this, the 6 and the 2. Uh-huh. Got it. Negative 6 and positive 2. And so if this thing equals 0, then x would be 0, 6, and negative 2, where you did the opposite of what was inside. And this is your setup, then, for your test point method. You used a number line. Here's negative infinity. Here's positive infinity. 0 is right there. 6 is right about there. And negative 2 is right about there. And what you did is you tested a point in each one of these sections on this number line. So like somebody pick a number between negative infinity and negative 2. What's a number between? Negative 4? This that I'm writing in red is not a part of my answer. It's just the number that I'm choosing. We might all choose a different number. Okay? So that can't be a part of our answer. And then what we do is we go up here and we plug it into this. If I plug a negative 4 in for x, I get a negative. Negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10, but all I need is the positive or negative. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And a negative times a negative times a negative is what? Negative. So this section here is negative. Any number that I would choose in here is negative. Now I need a number between negative 2 and 0. Negative 1. That would probably be the one most of us would choose, right? So now I do the same thing. I plug it in. If I plug it in for the x, I get a negative. If I plug it in for this x, negative 1 minus 6, that's negative. And negative 1 plus 2, positive. What's negative times a negative times a positive? Positive. Isn't it true if I have an odd number of negatives, it's going to be negative, and if I have an even number of negatives, it's going to be positive. Everybody agree with that? Okay. Now we pick a number between 0 and 6. 3. So I plug it in here. Is it positive or negative? Positive. When I plug it into this parenthesis, and when I plug it in here, is that section going to be positive or negative? negative? Negative. Because it has an odd number of negatives. Okay. Next, I pick a number between 6 and infinity. 7. Seven. So I plug them in. I get positive, positive, positive. Right? So this section is positive. Now, do you, is this coming back? Do you remember seeing this test point method? Is what it's called. No. You did it in Algebra 2. No. 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 Yeah, yeah, you did. She probably did it because she took two tests. But you all did it in Algebra 2. They just finished doing it. So it was early in the year. So. I still have my notes. Okay, yeah. Let's back it up. Yeah. 
All right, so greater than zero. What's greater than zero? Positive or negative? Positive. So all the places that have a plus, that's what your answer is. So we would call this the interval from negative two to zero. See how you just pull them right down in there? And also this section from six to infinity. So what this is saying is, can I get back to the original? Any number that I pick between negative two and zero and plug it in there, it works. And any number larger than six that I plug in there, it works. That's what this is saying. So whenever you have an inequality, meaning a greater than or a less than, what that means is there's more than one answer. It's not just an X value, like one number. It's a group of numbers. It can be decimals, <coughs> fractions, any of those numbers in between. Just like this. Just one. Well, in chapter three that we're about to begin, we're going to be talking about polynomial functions. So that last item that was just up there, the highest power was a three. It's a cubic function. It's considered a polynomial. Okay. But section, that's all of chapter three. So we're going to be talking about all of those. But in 3.1 that we're focused on today, we're talking about quadratic functions. <coughs> Who can remind me what a quadratic function is? Who had that parent that was a quadratic function? It's also called a squaring function. Uh -huh. Right, it's a parabola. Right, it's a parabola. Right, so that's really what we're talking about today. Our parabolas, they're also called quadratic functions. Okay. All right, a quadratic function is a function that's in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You can see that the highest power is a 2, Okay, also known as a parabola. Okay. Uh, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a cannot be 0, it is called a quadratic function. Okay. The quadratic function can also be written in this form, and we actually spend a lot of time on this form today. f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. This here sometimes is referred to as standard form, and sometimes it is also referred to vertex form. In fact, your Algebra 2 textbook referred to it as a <coughs> vertex form. The reason it's called vertex form is because if you take the opposite of this and this number right here, you get the actual vertex. The vertex is the maximum or the minimum, depending on if it opens up or down. So here are some pictures. This would be a parabola that opens up, in which case the vertex is right here. This is one that opens down, in which case the vertex is right here. So it's either the maximum or the minimum of the graph. If the a value is greater than zero, it opens up. If the a value is less than zero, it opens down. So you always look for that x squared term in your equation and ask yourself, is it positive or is it negative? Okay. Now notice where a is in both of these equations. If it's in this general form right here, a is with your x squared. And if it's in this standard form, it's out here in front of the parenthesis that if I foiled it out, I'd end up with an x squared. Okay. So the a is always, it, it usually is in, in front of wherever the x squared happens to be. The parabola itself is symmetric with respect to this line that cuts it in half. This line is known as the axis of symmetry. Sometimes the y-axis is your axis of symmetry. 
But in this course, sometimes the y, or the x-axis is. If you have one that opens left or right, you didn't talk about any of those in algebra two. So in this course, we continue to talk about parabolas like you did last year, but then also we go on and we turn them sideways as well. Okay, not yet. <laughs> we'll do that later. Not quite yet. But this axis of symmetry um, is an actual line that it is of the form x <coughs> equals, and it has a number. The number happens to be whatever the x value of the vertex is. So I could say x equals h. So if I ask you for the axis of symmetry and you just say 5, I'm going to mark pulling off. It has to be x equals 5. Okay? So make sure you have the x equals. I'm telling you now so that you know what I'm going to mark off for. Okay? I think I already mentioned the rest of that. Questions so far? One of the things that we will be looking at today is what happens if we have something in this form and we want to change it to this form right here. Okay, again, you did it last year in algebra two. Okay, in fact, they've already done it this year. So it's, it's, it was earlier in the year that you guys talked about this stuff. So first question, find the standard form. Remember the standard form looks like this. of a quadratic equation whose graph has a vertex of 1, negative 5. This is saying h equals 1 and k equals negative 5. That's what, when they tell you the vertex, that's the information they're giving you. And passes through this point, that means x equals 3 and y equals 7. It's just a regular point, not the vertex. And then it says, does f have a maximum or minimum value? Which we can't answer that until we take and find what that A value is. That's the only value in this equation that I don't know. So what I can do is I can take these four pieces of information and plug them in for four of the five unknowns and solve for that other unknown. Y is seven, A, we don't know. X is three, minus H, which is one, plus K, which is negative five. Well, 3 minus 1 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So 7 equals 4a minus 5. How do I get a by itself? Mm -hmm. Add 5, and then divide by 4, he said. So 12 equals 4a, and then divide by 4, and a is 3. So right now that I know A, A is 3. 3 is greater than 0. So does this have a maximum or minimum? Does it open up or down maybe is a good thing to ask first. If A is greater than 0, it opens up like this. That means it has a minimum. It has a low point. It doesn't have a high point because these ends keep going up forever and ever and ever. Okay? Now, to come up with the actual equation, all I fill in are the h, k, and a. So I get y equals 3 times x minus 1 squared minus 5. This here is the equation in standard form of our quadratic function. Questions so far? Good. All right. You can convert a quadratic function from standard form to vertex form by doing something called completing the square. Recall the steps to completing the square. Okay. Number one, you separate the x terms and the constant, the extra number you have, with a plus blank, and then include a minus blank after the c value. And I'll go through these in a problem in just a minute. 
you factor out an A value if necessary. If there is a number in front of the squared term, we'll factor it out. We'll start out with one that doesn't, because those are easier, and then we'll do one that does. Below the x values, we put a parenthesis squared that has an x inside. And then we're going to fill that in with either a plus number or minus a number. Beside the x, we're going to put half of the b value. And you're going to square the value that you got right here and place it in the blanks that are up above. If an A is factored out, then the A has to distribute through. And then you combine the C with this last term here, and that will be your K value. So let's actually work through one. So here is one right here. <clears throat> y equals x squared minus 2x plus 2. The first step says to take and separate your x's so here are my x's. I'm going to put a plus blank and then a minus blank. So I'm separating the terms with x's and the extra number that they're calling c for constant. Okay, so separating those with a plus blank. But if we're going to add something to this, we have to subtract it in order to keep it balanced. It says factor out an a value. There's no a value there other than 1. Below the x values, put a parenthesis squared with an x inside, if that's the letter that you have here. If it would be an M or a K or anything, you put that letter, whatever letter's there. Now, you're going to take this B value, which is negative 2, you're going to take half of it. What's half of negative 2? And then you're going to square it. See how you have to like pass by this squared right here? What's negative 1 squared? 1. And you're going to put that in this blank as well. And then finally, you're going to add these two numbers together at the end. 2 minus 1 is 1. You have just taken y equals x squared minus 2x plus 2 which is what we consider general form, and you converted it to standard form or vertex form. Because now when you look at it, you can tell that the vertex is at the opposite of this number, same as this number, is at 1, 1. I can tell the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. So if I wanted to take and graph this, I know the vertex is at 1, 1. I know it opens up because the A value is positive. I know it has an axis of symmetry right here. And I know it crosses the Y axis at 2. So remember last year in Algebra 2, you learned that, OK, if there's a point over here, then there must be a point over here, too, because that axis of symmetry cuts it in half. And so now from there, you can see your parabola. This is nothing new. You did this last year. Okay? You actually did completing the square in Algebra 1 as well, but you're pretty confused in Algebra 1 a lot of times. Like, oh, numbers and letters thrown together. Well, you know. But you did this last year, the completing the square. Okay. Questions on so this right here is the standard form or vertex form. So it says convert the standard form to standard form, then give the vertex. And we did all of that. Okay. Next one. Let's look at one that has a number out front. Okay. Now, A is not 1 here. So this one does have an extra step. All right. Starts out the same, though. We separate our x values with our number that doesn't have an x by putting a plus blank in between them. But then we have to put a minus blank at the end, because whatever we add, we have to subtract. Then it says, if there is an a value, you have to factor it out. 
So here's the extra line. You only are worrying about these terms here. When I factor the two out, I get x squared. 8x divided by two is negative 4x, and then plus blank. You don't need to carry the rest of this down until the end. It is here then that I put my parentheses squared, but the A value also comes down in front. The letter that we're talking about here is an X. What do you think goes in this blank right here, in this spot? I shouldn't say blank, but in this spot. Right, it's half of that, which is minus 2. Now, here's where people tend to mess up. Okay, so watch carefully. When I go to fill the blank above it, negative 2 squared is 4. That does not go in these two blanks. Do you see how in order to get up to the line above it, the 2 has to distribute to each one of those things? So an 8 goes in that blank and in that blank. Now I take and add 9 minus 8 which is one. So I have just converted my general form into this standard vertex form. What is the vertex? What do you think? Two, Two one, yeah. What is the axis of symmetry? X equals the X value, though. Two. So could I graph it if I needed to? At 2, there's this axis of symmetry. At 2, 1, we have this. Crosses the Y axis, whoop, way up here at 9. And that means there's another value over here. And boom, I can graph it. Let's try again. This one has a negative. So what's my first step? You guys tell me at this point. Put in the blanks. You got it. Y equals negative 3x squared plus 18x plus blank minus 11 minus blank. It has an A value other than one. So what comes next? You got it. Looking at these three terms, they're kind of grouped like that. The first three are doing one thing, the other two are doing something else. But I'm factoring out the negative three. What's 18 divided by negative three? negative 6. And then make that parenthesis below it. What goes in this empty spot right here? Negative 3. What goes into this blank? What goes into this blank? Negative 27. And then negative 27 here as well, right? <clears throat> so over here, I have negative 11 plus 27, which would be plus 16. So, does everybody see? I took half of that, I squared it coming up here. Then I got to distribute to get up to there. So, what this means is if I took negative 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3 and added 16, I would get back to this right here. This right here, when I multiply this, is x squared minus 6x plus 9. When I distribute that, I get minus 3x squared plus 18x minus 27 plus 16, which is negative 3x squared plus 18x. Minus 11. I get right back up there. Yeah. 
uh, negative 11 plus 27. Okay. I'm, I'm rewriting this parabola in a different form so that I can get different information from it. Now, in this particular problem that we're talking about, the A value here is negative 3. So what does that tell me about the graph of this one? Right. It's flipped over the x-axis. It's vertically, vertically stretched, <laughs> stretched by 3. It's moving to the right 3 and up 16 even, right? Can we say that from what we did in the last chapter? Right? So if I was to take and to graph this, it has a vertex. Oh, we didn't do that. What's the vertex? 316 goes to the right 3 and up 16. <laughs> Here's the vertex. We know it's opening down. It's crossing the y-axis at negative 11. If that's 16, 11, negative 11 is right here. It has an axis of symmetry. Every one of them has an axis of symmetry. Yeah, you have to have. The axis, oh, there's the tendency. The axis of symmetry for this is what? X equals 3. Okay. So what do you think with completing the square? Get the hang of it? It's like the same process over and over. The only thing that can mess you up is if there's a number in front. You just factor it out. It's okay. It's algebra. Each time you complete the square, the vertex will have the same form. It's always going to be HK. Alphabetically, right? It's like XY is alphabetical. There is a shorter way for finding the vertex if you don't want to go through completing the square. In which case, you could just take negative B over 2A. Again, you did that last year. You did it in Algebra 1 as well. Okay. And then in order to find the Y term, you'd have to plug that into the function in order to find the Y term of Y. So for the following functions, I have one down here, determine whether the graph opens up or down. So if this is our function, F of X equals negative 4X squared plus 12X plus 7 looking at is it going to open up or down down why right because a is negative 4 which is less than 0 it's negative then it says find the vertex okay option one we could take and we could complete the square on it but I want you to have more tools in your toolbox so I want to show you another method all right in this problem, A is negative 4, B is 12, and C is 7. You all agree? AX squared plus BX plus C, right? If I just take the opposite of B, negative 12, over 2 times A, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. 4 goes into this 3 times, 4 goes into that 2 times. 3 halves happens to be the x value of my vertex. In order to find the y value of my vertex, I could take and plug this in for each x and solve it. f of 3 halves is negative 4 times 3 halves squared plus 12 times 3 halves plus 7. This is not going to be as painful as you think, okay? I know that the fractions might be freaking out right now, but it's okay. Remember order of operations. I do not distribute the 4 to this until after I have squared it. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses and exponents come first before I multiply, okay? So if I'm going to square a fraction, I just square the top and square the bottom. 
then multiply by negative 4. Well, this means negative 4 over 1. So those cancel, giving me just negative 9 for that first number. This doesn't have a power. This is just 12 over 1 times 3 over 2. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 12 six times. I get 18 plus 18 and then plus 7. Negative 9 plus 18 is 9 plus 7 is 16. So 3 halves 16 is the vertex. We already answered the question about does it open up or down. So we got the vertex. Determine if the function has a maximum or minimum. If it opens down, what does it have? It has a maximum. And finally, find the axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry going to be? What is it? Nope. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure you have that x equals. Okay. An axis of symmetry is a line. All right, so it has to be the equation of the line. Okay. That's why it has that. Questions on that one? So now it's an alternative. Option one, you could take and complete the square and you could get what you needed. Where are we at today? Let's see. This bell rings at 9.12. So, yeah. That's probably a good stopping place for today. If you want to get started on the Math Excel, you certainly can. Okay? That way it won't take so long tomorrow night.